Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation. It's the start of season 16. Could be the last, could not be the last. Who knows? We'll talk about that more in the next episode when we've got a bit more time, because this one, obviously, uh, lots of stuff to talk about. Now, I thought we'd start on today's, on this page, so you can actually see the group that we got straight off the bat. And yeah, Porto and Copenhagen, good stuff. We got, we got bloody Monaco in our group. The team that we had to beat in the final last year are somehow in our group as the pot two team. I mean... Come on, man. Um, that is going to be a really difficult pair of games against them. And I'm a little bit concerned about that, in all honesty. I have to say. As you can see, obviously, Lech Poznan, uh, they were automatically in it too. They got Leon, Schalke, and Spurs. It's an interesting pair of games. I think Spurs, probably the standout team, although Schalke have been pretty good, have won the competition before. I think there's a chance Leon could sneak third. Not Leon. Uh, Lech could sneak into third in this group if they can get good results against Leon maybe sneak a point at home against the Spurs or a Schalke. They've done it before, uh, or done things to that level anyway. And the other good news is Lechia did get through. However, and this is the key point here, um, they got probably the most difficult group I could possibly have imagined. Atletico, Dortmund, and Manchester United. And that being said, they still only lost 2-1 to Manchester United. Uh, and Eduardo Flores' goal gave them the lead at Old Trafford, but unfortunately they ballsed it up. Um, yeah, that they kind of... They just... Yeah, it wasn't going to happen for them, unfortunately. But just quickly... This is the Europa League, and things have got even better here, because for once, we actually got decent draws. We didn't get a Sevilla or a Marseille or one of those types of teams. They actually got decent draws, and it was about bloody time, in all honesty. Um, Legia got through pretty comfortably uh, by beating Lokomotiv Moscow, I think 5-1 on aggregate, very, very easily to get through. And who was it? The oh, GKS. They came through pretty well. They had a tough tie against Utrecht, which was fairly difficult for them, but other than that, they were plain sailing through. So we actually have, for the first time, I think, in this save, a full quota of teams in Europe, which is why I do wonder if this year we might be able to take some massive strides towards catching up because we've got three teams in the Europa League group stages, three teams in the Champions League group stages, and I mean, good knows, goodness me. And they're not bad groups either when you actually look at it. GKS got some solid teams in their group. Uh, Legge got some, you know, winnable. Sevilla's going to be tough. Um, and Zag got Adelaide, Atalanta and Mainz. I think Zag will probably struggle, but still, just getting there, maybe get some extra points, just boost that coefficient a little bit. We're already onto like 19 points in our collective coefficient. Um, so yeah, it's looking good for us at the moment. And that is a very exciting thing for this season. Now, the player values have finally skyrocketed. It, I assume it's because we finally ticked over into actually being the sixth team, uh, sixth best league in the world, rather than just having the sort of in name only kind of thing. We're also the second highest reputation team in Europe now. Only PSG have a higher rating, and that's been so much nicer. In terms of keeping hold of players, it's been brilliant. Um, very few players have complained about wanting to leave. There's been, like, usually it'd be like, my client would like to go here, but there's been virtually none of that, except for one player, weirdly, and he did leave, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The board, once again, have not finished the stadium extension and have just gone, you know what? Scrap that. We're going to get even bigger. So now it's going to be 32,312. They just seem to keep extending it every year. It's going to be great. And also Wolves put in a £44 million bid for Thiago Verash. Just out of nowhere. Just straight up. I didn't even negotiate. Just £44 million. Um, I said no, and he was happy to stay. But it was interesting to see that some of the money has been batted around for our players. Uh, someone bid £69 million. Yes, I know. The sex number. For Blaise Elisic. Uh, and he, he was happy to stay. It's brilliant. So we kind of raked in a little bit of money on that one as well. We got £13 million from um, Jacobo Garcia's clause with Inter, which was brilliant. And we got half of Michel Gizic's uh, transfer, which, remember guys, I showed you at the end of last season, uh, maybe in the analysis video actually, the guy that used to play for us that had a really good season last year for relegated Wodge, and I said he's probably going to move. Well, he did. He moved for a million and a half pounds to rack off, and we got half the money, so that was kind of nice. Right. Transfers. Um, few outs. Only a few ins, but I have made a, a, a rather large signing that I think is an important one. This is the biggest out of the lot. It's Tobias Rursa. This was a really strange one. Like, we had some bids from Premier League sides of around about £20 million because obviously there was the increased amount. And I was like, okay, we'll listen. But he didn't want to leave. So I was like, well, just I just wanted to see how much they were willing to go. Eventually, it was like Wolves and I think they wanted it was £22 million in the end, which was all right. But I had no desire to get rid of the guy particularly. I'm just going to turn this off in case it gives away any spoilers to any other players I might have signed. Um, but yeah, I was pretty content with just keeping on. And then Leipzig came in with a bid and it said, my client would like to speak to Leipzig. And I thought that's weird considering he came through at Hoffenheim. Maybe he's a Leipzig fan or something and he wanted to return to his country. So I turned down their initial bid and he started complaining. And I thought nobody else is complaining about leaving, but apparently he was. Um, so in the end, I tried to negotiate with them, but 
The fact is, we negotiated a, an enormous deal. £37.5 million Tobias Rosa has left. Three-star player for us, but we've got Thiago Veras now. So I thought, you know what? We can take the nearly 40 million quid with a 50% of next selfie clause and let him be on his way, to be honest. So that's a huge deal. The, the biggest sale that we've ever made in this save was Tobias Rosa. Remember, Diego Restrepo only cost Liverpool 25 million last year. Just one of those weird quirks, I suppose. Mateus Vigawa has gone to Legia on loan. Yeah, so we talked about this in the analysis video. Nobody had actually put a bid in uh, for a contract for him towards the end of last year. And the only team that were interested was Dusseldorf. And I didn't want him leaving to go to a German club because I wanted him to stay in Poland. So I offered him a new deal. Uh, he accepted the new deal. He's on a tiny bit less money, which is brilliant. And uh, yeah, he's got a long contract now. I think it's an it's a five-year extension with a three-year option on top of that. So it's essentially an eight-year contract extension for Matty's Vicks. Like someone said, give him a lifetime contract. That's exactly what I've gone and done. And then I immediately loaned him out to Lekia for the season. Uh, and as you can see, he started pretty damn well. He's got a goal in the Champions League for them. I think that was against Napoli, or it might have been Besiktas. Um, and obviously, he's got four goals in the in the league already for them as well, as they're starting off very, very strongly. So, yeah, just good stuff. He got one in, yeah, got a couple in the uh, qualifiers as well, which is really, really nice. But Matthews Viggs doing what he does. Um, I wonder if he'll end up scoring more goals for Lechia in the end than he will for us, because I'm just going to keep loaning him out, I think. Another big out was Federico Grandi. Um, coming towards the end of the window, I think it was. Um, I, he was still here, and he'd done well for Milan last year, but I was like, well, if anyone wants him, they can have him on loan or whatever. But then Milan put an un like a, a non-negotiable bid in, and I thought, there's no one else that even says they were interested in him. Maybe we should just take this opportunity to move him on because he's not going to play for us. So in the end, it's 19 million up front, rising to 24 million pounds for a guy that only cost us eight from Inter. So I was more than happy to make that deal and move him on for huge money. We've actually tripled our money on the guy. Plus, they paid us a huge loan fee last year. I was well happy to see him move on. 120 grand a week he's on. I don't blame him for leaving. And then the only player that's actually left the country on loan is Mamadou Boateng. We couldn't find any Polish clubs that were interested this time for some reason. So he's gone to Atalanta uh, for a season. 60k a week, uh, sorry, a month on top of his wages as well. He's worth 13 million pounds in this, is what I mean. Um, and there's been a lot of other players that have gone out to other Polish sides on loan on free sort of loans for the season, like Jez Norris and lots of youngsters. But I've kept uh, Bozajewski here because we're going to need him this season, believe me. Right, now the ins. The first one in is Kogotso Mogotsi, who's coming from Mamaloni Sundowns over in the South African League. Um, I thought it was just a cool signing. When it comes up and I thought, oh, he's actually not too bad. At 1.4 million pounds is what he's cost us in the end. And my goodness is this guy going to be useful because Iglesias broke his pissing ankle towards the end of the window and we've literally been left in the lurch. We actually had to play Piscola for a game because Magotzi was injured as well. So he's going to basically be playing all of our games in the Champions League group stages is Magotzi here. So big ask for the lad, but it's going to have to be done. Next up is another youngster. This is Alexandru Andre, who's coming from Anderlecht for £14 million, I think, in the end, is the total price of the deal. It's only four or so million up front. Um, but he's a central midfielder. I said I wanted to just sort of strengthen in there a little bit, um, given that we'd sort of been slowly losing players in that role. And I wanted to make sure we had some more youngsters coming through. 17-year-old Belgian, uh, decent passing. His vision's not amazing. He's got good technique, good flair. There's a lot of things I like about this guy. Um, he's definitely going to need some training, but I feel like he's one for the future anyway. My scouts seem to really like him. And now the biggest sort of outlight of the summer, Maurizio Coronel. This is the weirdest thing. This is the first time I've ever picked up a player based on a news article linking me with the player, the, a player that I'd not scouted or even seen before. Um, but I saw the news article linking me and I went, oh, hang on, he's a defensive midfielder. He could be what we need right now because Prado, I just wonder if he maybe needs a little bit more time. And so I went in for this guy. He's cost us 40 million in the end, but he's not an international just yet. He's got great stats for that defensive role of the game. Like his heading is 17. He's got decent passing, uh, tackling of 13, lots of good physical abilities. He's pretty strong. He's got great balance and agility. I, I like this guy a lot. And I figured he's just an improvement in that role. And I had some money to spend. So I figured, you know what? He could be the man that we needed to just give us a bit more uh, bit more strength in that part of the pitch. So 40 million pounds, 20 up front, 20 over three years. Uh, I felt like it was a sensible deal to be done. He's not played a great deal for us, obviously, because it's been in the league, but he did get an assist in the UEFA Super Cup final. So there's that. And that actually completes our transfers. You can see all the other loan signings out. There's a few players left on free transfers, of course, towards the end. And a few uh, mostly have gone out on loan. So Bustos has gone out on loan. Uh, Malitz has gone out on loan. Any big names here that have gone out on loan. Uh, Charnetsky, who's a good young talent, has gone out on loan. Montanez has gone to Lech Poznan this time out on loan. Jovanovic as well. Sedovic, Ardelayan. Lots of players going to other Polish teams on loan, which is what we wanted. Right, off-camera games, and we're going to come back today for the game against FC Copenhagen. It's going to be a nice one, I think, but we are missing some players through injury because Faposi has gone and got himself shin splints. That's the kind of injury I would get. Uh, like, genuinely, land on your front foot, mate. Come on. 
First up, Tuna Victory over Skla. Lovely old job for Posse got a goal. Vicente got a goal. You're going to be noticing that Vicente's name comes up quite a bit during this period. It, it's mental. He's been amazing this year. Just occurred to me, actually, there was a, a Super Cup game before that against that second division team. Vicente scored a hat-trick in this one with two penalties in there. Uh, Treverio got one, as did for Posse. Vicente smashing him in. Then it was a 3-1 over Zag. Lisic for Posse and Vicente from the penalty spot. Then a 2-0 away at Lech Poznan. Pereira and Vicente with the goals. Then things really got turned on. A 6-0 at home to Pogo. Pereira grabbed one. Vicente grabbed two with a penalty in there. Two goals for Treveria and another one for Faposi. Then we had the UEFA Super Cup final against Spurs. A 2-0 victory with two goals from Ibrahima Pereira, which is really nice. Played at Stadium Toulouse. That is the most creative name. That's probably their actual name, isn't it? It's the Stad Velodrome, isn't it? They must have a new stadium. Then 3-0 against Viswa. Two more goals this time from the penalty spot again from Vicente. And Faposi grabbed one too. Followed up by a 5-1 over Gornik. Orozco. Two more penalties. Penalties for Vicente and a goal from open play and one from Blaise Elisic. Followed by a 5 0 over Swans. Ibrahima Pereira scored four times in this one, including one from the spot for Posse goal. I think we've had about nine penalties this year or something absurd. And then finally, we had uh, a one all against Lechia. Rotated side in the end with this one. Fernino grabbed himself a goal. Juan Antonio had already put them in front. Had to rotate for the uh, game against FC Copenhagen today, just to be sure. And that leaves the league looking like this. We've got 22 points, but we are five points clear, you'll note of GKS Katowice. They're finally having a start to the season that suggests they might actually be able to challenge this year, which is weird because they've actually spent zero money in the summer. Not a single paid transfer they've made in the summer. They've sold a couple of players for like six million in total, but not a single paid transfer. Solbach and is clearly trying to make Katowice into a genuinely good well-run club, and it's about bloody time. Uh, this were newly promoted, I believe, are up there too. Lekia and Lek are in there as well with Legia. They're not far behind, all doing decent stuff so far, so really pleased with them. Skra having a bit of a poor start, though. Patrick Schick might not be able to do what he did last year. Motor, uh, with, of course, Wojciech Fiacic in their team, doing not too great. But Zag, uh, who, of course, came fifth or fourth last year, having a really poor start, unfortunately. Not the greatest times. Paul Pogba's Corona doing all right in there as well. So, today, it's FC Copenhagen. I mean, we should be winning with a home team. They're them. Um, so we'll see. I am going to play this strategy today because it's at home against the weakest team in the group, but I am going to do a quick pick and move some stuff around so we won't actually be seeing um, my man Coronel today. So Pereira, Lisic Vicente, Edelberg. I actually think that it might be a chance for Rafael... Uh, all right, Broz Bronizewski. Bronizewski, right? That's his name. I was I could never remember how it was spelled, so I couldn't pronounce it properly. So yeah, Rafael Bronizewski. I'm going to bring him in today uh, instead of Edelberg. Someone said Edelberg could do with the gets into opponent's area trait, and I, I agree with you on that one. Um, so we're probably going to train that one. Orozco and Gorosito in the middle is fine. Alborosin, Freitas, Falvela, Shabal, and of course Magotzi in goal. On the bench, we're going to go with Pimentinha, Pandorovic. Uh, wait, no, I'm going to put the llama on the bench instead of Panda. So many animals here. Um, Waterberg, Treverio, Alan Olivier, Carol, and Fernino on the bench. This should be a comfortable victory, but you know what we're like in these games. Still on 3D from that final bit of the Champions League final. Right, so before we go to the game, there's been a bit of confusion about what that Huesca save actually entails, mainly because people might have missed an episode where I talked about one thing or another thing. So I just wanted to very, very quickly lay out exactly, in theory, as condensed terms as I can, exactly what that save is actually going to be when I start doing that at some point. So firstly, it's a one season challenge. So the, the, the entire series will be one single season, no more. Second to that, I will be controlling everything myself. So my assistant will basically be doing nothing. I'll be doing training. I will be doing uh, training schedules. I'll be assigning individual training, mentoring, sorting out all of that stuff from scratch. We will be building a tactic from scratch during the preseason friendlies, showing you how I would go about doing that. Not that that's the correct way, but show you how I go about doing these things. Because I want to learn all the intricacies of the game that I might be ignoring, and some of you might also be ignoring, and we're going to learn together. And the only way I can really do that is by taking more time over the actual season itself. So there'll be less in an episode, but there will actually be more in an episode, if that makes sense. We're also going to be diving deep into the analysis side of the game, because what I did against Manchester City, I want to be trying to do that basically for every video, to the point where we're trying to get the maximum out of it, and showing how you could maybe get more out of your team, just by analysing a few little things, and basing it off of the analytics side of the game, using all the comparisons, the stat packs, all that sort of stuff, basically. It's almost like I was actually manager of Huesca, almost like I'm RPing in that sort of thing. Think of it more like that Sunderland documentary is the best way to describe it, I suppose. We'll be doing our own scouting, we'll be doing all the medical stuff, really analysing like players' uh, fitness levels to keep who's in the squad, who to rotate around for cups, really discussing this stuff, basically, in detail. The episodes won't be any longer than normal, uh, it just means that we're, you know, breaking it up, so you might only, some episodes you might only get one game, but you'll get so much other stuff around it that it won't just feel like we're just trudging through the season basically because of all the extra stuff and don't worry it's not just going to be like a stream of consciousness i'm going to be editing it really really tightly so that it doesn't feel like i'm just babbling on basically because i just want to give this a try out and see if i can get better at the game by doing it and also maybe we could all pick up some stuff together right okay that's enough of that let's get into today's game against fc copenhagen
And obviously, if it's successful, because it's only one season, if people like it, we could always do another one with a different team in a different scenario. Huesca I just picked because I knew it would be incredibly difficult and we'd be fighting relegation the entire year. But we could always do a team that's trying to win the title, all sorts of stuff. I just think it'd be a fun way of getting different teams involved. Oh, my goodness me, what a strike. Particularly with the limited time left in towards uh, FM20. I wouldn't want to start another long-term series, really, in that time period. Bros oh, hello, he's driving forward. Couldn't find Lisic, though. Ball down the field. Could I just go down the wings and up that passing directness? Back for Abrasine. Oh, that's a poor touch, but easily cut out by Favela. We've got to get that possession up a little bit. We've not hit the target yet with a single shot. Chabal, Bronoszewski, Gorosito again. Oh, good save by Flint. Chabal, will he go short? No, he's just going to lump that one in. It's going to come back to him. Goes back for Gorosito again. Oh, what a bloody finish. Brian Gorosito, only his first of the year. That is an insanely good goal from Gorosito, though it has to be said. Schalke are winning away at Olympic Lyon, which is, I guess, kind of good in a way, uh, because it might help let... I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to get third in that group, but... This is really good from Gorosito. Look at that. He's actually used those two defenders as like a one of those like training uh, dummies. That was brilliant. Lisex ball. We could do with a second goal just to make this a bit more comfortable for us. Vicente, Gorosito, Falvela, and Vicente. Freitas. Albracine hits the side net in. It's Freitas out wide. The winger. The big winger. Dinks it in. Turn away. Oh, Gorosito can fancy this again. Oh, my goodness. He's been everywhere. Chabal takes it short for Gorosito again. What's he fancy this time? Finds Pereira. Oh, what a save from Flint. Well, there we go. Pretty comfortable first half. One nil up. Weirdly, Vicente has been the worst player on the pitch considering he's been our best player all season. Okay, so analysis is very much out wide sort of situation. I think we're just going to keep going with that. Our forward line actually hasn't done the best job so far tonight, in all honesty. Albracine. Vicente. Space for Lisic. Sets himself up. Oh, it's a great goal. Blaise and Lisic. Only his third goal of the season. He's not been quite so goal hungry this season, it's fair to say. But he's done brilliantly with the assist so far. And he just peeled away into a lovely position. Vicente ha hasn't managed to get a goal on the night, but he has grabbed himself another assist for the year. That's really nice. Just looks up, sees Lisic. Lisic's in acres of space. One touch, thump with the left foot. Near post, 2-0. Good stuff. You can see the uh, construction going on on our stand over here. Orozco doesn't do the best with that, considering his aerial prowess. Uh, but there's Abrasine flying in. Oh, what a ball. Pereira, can he finish this off? It's a very tight angle. It doesn't matter. What a finish from Ibrahima Pereira. His ninth goal of the season. For a player that's kind of gone under the radar a bit the last few years, this year he has really stepped it up. He only got 19, I think, in all comps last year. But what a ball from Abrasine. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but that being said, the finish from Pereira as well. He's missed a lot of these in recent years. Not today, though. 3-0. Comfortable stuff now. Hello. Oh, Bronoszewski's won it. Olivier, Carroll, breakaway chance here. Lovely ball for Lisic. He's really stepped it up tonight. Lisic's ball through for Fanino. That's surely offside. Apparently, it's not offside. Well, that's just come out of nowhere. Lisic, brilliant work again. The ball initially from Carroll here. When he gets it, he just looks up straight into the center of the park, plays a lovely ball for Lisic, and that just sets this play away. Fanino just manages to hold his run just enough. He's through, and it's a lovely finish from Fanino. It wouldn't be a Champions League game without Fanino coming off the bench and getting a goal, would it? Lisic. Fanino! Oh, that should have been a goal. It's hit the crossbar and bounced away. That was so close to being a goal for Fanino there. And Gorosito now, and it's a well saved again. Gorosito to have another crack at it from this distance. And again, it's saved. Fanino, a couple of seconds left here. Looks like it's going to be a comfortable 4-0 victory in the end. I mean, great win in the end. Um, took us a little while to get going, but finally did turn their screw. And honestly, their goalkeeper was phenomenal. Still, despite conceding four goals, he was still great. Lisic, Pereira, Fanino, and Gorosito with the goals. Uh, in the end, Schalke got a 3-1 victory away at Lyon, which will definitely help out Lech but they've still got a lot of work to do at the moment, that is for sure. But in spite of all that, I'm still very confident about what Poland as a whole could do this year. It's the first time we've ever had, I think, a full complement actually reach the group stages of any competitions like this. So I do wonder how much ground we could potentially make up this year. And I... I just think if we maybe had an incredibly good season this year, there might well be the hope to actually keep going with this if we start to make real end roads. And that's the thing. So we'll have to sort of see. I said I'd play it by ear and I'm still curious about that. Good first win uh, in the Champions League. Considering we're missing the likes of Faposi and Iglesias, there's going to be a few players out. We're going to need to do a lot of work. And next episode is going to be really tough to do that. We've got Monaco... We've got Porto and Monaco, both away from home. Probably the two toughest games in the... Well, actually, no. I mean, both of the Monaco games are the tough ones. But we need to come through the next two games with some decent points on the board and see what we can do. If we could win in Monaco, then I'd have to say that's probably this done. But still, there's a lot more to do. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode and you're looking forward to the new season, I hope you are, in all honesty, then drop a like on the video. That'd be glorious. And if you are new to the channel and this is the first episode you've seen, subscribe. That'd be gorgeous as well. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for Porto and Monaco away. It's not going to be easy, but we can do it. I think Porto should be winnable. Monaco... Maybe not so much. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.